Hello guys, this is MC here. Can you hear me? Hearing you loud and clear, MC. Great. Well, uh, what we're going to do today is, you know, a Twitter space. So for those who don't know me, I am MC and today I will be your host for this CryptoCoins Coach panel discussion. CryptoCoins Coach is the number one crypto community since 2017 and it's a community of traders and investors with more than 500,000 active members. It also provides fintech and blockchain education and also features and hosts AMAs with top projects. Today on our panel, we have Damien Spriggs, who is the head of community at Crypto.com. And we have two members for CryptoMom team, Toma, the chief marketing officer, and Amit, or Amit, you'll tell me if I pronounced it right, the chief strategy officer. Regarding the recent Terra case, will Crypto.com raise its standards even more to the projects to be listed on the exchange? If so, which factors will you pay special attention to? And as we know, being listed on major exchanges is a large milestone for any crypto project due to the mass exposure and accessibility it gains. So Damien, could you tell us a bit about your role at Crypto.com and the decision-making process that is involved when new listings are made on the exchange? Sorry if I was a bit too long. <laughs> I think Damien might have some uh, connection uh, problems. Let me check. If he doesn't get back, we can change the order and introduce you, Tom, and then your question. Yeah, no, <laughs> I will start. No worries. Uh, <laughs> first of all, very happy to be on a, on a CryptoCoins coach. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan, follower, uh, and trader that uh, follows uh, signals across uh, your uh, family's uh, channels, all of them. Uh, very dear friend, so it's a big honor to be here. First time that I'm uh, being hosted on this show. It's great. Uh, so thank you guys for having us. Uh, it's a great honor to all of the crypto coin, uh, crypto coins uh, coach family. Um, without further ado, I'll present myself. I'm Tomer uh, Wanuni. I'm the CMO of uh, Cryptomon. I do in Cryptomon everything that uh, relates to marketing uh, from A to Z. Uh, building the community, uh, our extended team, our family, our community is quite large. We have uh, almost uh, 400,000 uh, cross-channel. You're more than welcome to join us. Find us on Telegram, Twitter, or Discord. Um, and that's it. That's about me. Uh, everything related to community, partnerships, uh, marketing, advertising, PR, etc. Uh, goes through me. And that's it. That's me in a nutshell. Amit? When you said, uh, hi everyone, when you said partnerships and strategy goes through you, then basically I don't have a job description, right? Uh, no. <laughs> but but, but it's, That's nice, a good one. It's, it's nice that you took it upon yourself. No, 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 no. sorry, sorry. Summer, yes, of course. <laughs> marketing strategy meant and my partnership marketing, <laughs> of course. Oh, good. So I'm Amit, great to meet you guys. Happy, happy to be here. Um, I've been part of the blockchain space for, for over eight years now. I bought my first Bitcoin in early 2014. bought my first Ethereum at like $10 in uh, early 2016. And basically, I've been advising uh, companies within the space ever since crypto became cool in 2017. Uh, I worked as a token architect in a, a security token company and a product manager and also worked in the gaming space in a gaming company called Platica. Um Ever since then, joined Cryptomon a year ago as a chief strategy officer when we were really at the beginning of our uh, inception stages. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm, in, I'm responsible for, for strategic uh, partnerships and strategy in the company um, over the past year. Uh, happy to be here as well. Well, very happy to meet you both. And you both introduced yourselves, so thank you for that. Now, my question, I don't know to which of you. It's Damien just, <laughs> Damien just uh, joined Twitter, us. So, uh, Twitter's Damien let me free. Personal. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, we'll okay, start Damien, with Damien ahead. then. So, I don't know if you heard me before, you know, the introduction, but basically, is could you tell us more about you, you know, your role at Crypto.com 
and the decision making process that is involved, you know, the new listings that are made on the exchange. And you know, yes. basically getting to know you. One hundred percent. Now that I can speak, we're we're free to get a get onto that. So for sure, happy to speak a little bit on it. Uh, so my name is Damien Spriggs. I'm the head of community over here at crypto.com NFT. Uh, I would say my primary responsibilities are building out our communities across Twitter, Discord, and Telegram channels, but then also working closely with our teams that are dropping NFTs on our platform to ensure we get that great social push that every project deserves when it comes to launching on Crypto.com NFT. So lots of that marketing, planning, all that good stuff. Um, I guess regarding the whole Terra incident, you know, it's it's super unfortunate. Uh, crypto is a wild industry and when things happen, you know, they tend to happen fast. And this was one of the best recent cases, you know, we've seen of that. And I use best lightly, just best because it, you know, describes it, not that it's a good thing. Um, cause I, I hate seeing people in the community go through a tough time. So it's a really raw thing for me to see. Um, and I guess back to your question, I can't really speak towards the nature of listing coins on the crypto.com side of things simply because I myself am not personally involved in it. Uh, but I can assure you that everything that gets added to our platform is heavily vetted. Uh, the security of our users is always paramount to everything we do as a company. So I'm sure that after what happened with Luna, uh, it will simply become a case study to better understand how we can keep our customers even more secure in the future. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Now, my next question, and I don't know who, which one of you can answer this. Well, it could be the three of you, is what is your vision behind your project? What is the main aim? Tamir, do you want to take it or should I? Yeah, well, uh, please go t- you take it and I will, <laughs> I will follow. <laughs> sure. So, as, as you know, um, crypto gaming as a whole has been sort of on a downtrend spiral over the last uh, few months, ever since it's, it speaks uh, in the end of the year of 2021. And, you know, a lot of projects had their peak at the end of 2021 and ever since declined. But I think that in, the term, in terms of how blockchain gaming is evolving, we basically started with the concept of play to earn, Axie Infinity and the likes started this concept. And basically this was directed to a very specific niche of audience, right? This was specifically towards those who are looking to uh, work figuratively uh, within blockchain gaming and basically create some form of income while playing, where the games in themselves weren't interesting enough the core game loop wasn't intensive enough the meta game wasn't really interesting and due to that fact the audience was basically trying to create some form of income usually third world countries southeast asia and this was basically blockchain gaming and this was the whole vision you create some some form of uh, breeding mechanism and people basically breed and those that breed basically this creates an income to the company and they distribute it back to the users and so on creating this feedback loop. And, and you know, ever since Axie Infinity started, it took a significant time until it basically became a positive feedback loop. However, it's still a loop and it's basically dependent upon people actually breeding. And when the NFT hype of, of gaming sort of um, died down, then basically no one was breeding anymore and rewards decreased. And the games themselves weren't interesting enough for people to keep playing them, even though they weren't re- uh, creating some form of significant income. Due to the fact, play and earn uh, was the first, second stage of, of, of blockchain gaming. And in that particular instance, they understood, and of course we understood that as well, that when you create a game, you need the game to be immersive and interesting for the users, for them to play, while also creating some form of incentivization from the monetary perspective for them to stay engaged within your game. So it's not putting the money first, it's putting the game first and money second, where in play and earn, it was money first, game second. Now, when we launched, we had our listing, our IDO in in August, late August, and we were the first in the crypto space to coin the phrase play and earn, because this was never our focus to create some form of um, Axie Infinity-like model, right? Our focus was creating a great game that people enjoy, and you can... We have around 450,000 community members today, and we have a lot of early adopters that are fully engaged within our project. Um, And they're basically playing the game today, breeding as well, because the breeding is already live. 
and are waiting for the next stages of the game because they want to be part of the crypto money universe. And those are like our target audience. It's not like third world countries, Southeast Asia, looking to create a sustainable income from gaming. Our focus is people that had like the fire of Pokemon in them when they were younger and they want to immerse themselves within this type of world that is similar to it, definitely not uh, identical. Um, and basically adding new layers on top of it every every single month. So that's basically our our vision as to uh, what crypto money should be. Well, well, thank you very much for this amazing introduction. Sorry, Anything sorry, you'd like to add, really long. <laughs> Damien or Tona? No, I have uh, nothing to add. Well, I mean, basically uh, said it all, said it very well. Nothing on my side. Absolutely. <laughs> Commits just doing too good a job. We might have yeah, to quit well, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, you know, about Nine Heroes, a Solana blockchain based, you know, play to earn game uh, that has announced the closing of its $7.5 million strategic investment round at a value, valuation of $100 million last week. Crypto.com, if I'm not mistaken, is among the investors. And we've noticed that play to earn and move to earn gaming projects appear to be among the first ones recovering from the recent market massacre. So does Crypto.com consider such projects as the future of the blockchain and NFTs, or do you have like a different vision? Yeah, nice. I mean, that's good to hear. Uh, again, I can't speak to the specific, you know, project uh, because I'm not directly involved with it. But I can let you guys know that, you know, gaming and NFTs truly go hand in hand very well. Um, I think that we have a focus on bringing more and more gaming focused drops to Crypto.com NFT. One, because games can allow a whole new degree of utility and usability, playability to your NFTs. Uh, digital collectibles are great and they make a lot of sense in a lot of different situations, but building games on top of NFTs allows us to interact with our NFTs in a way like never before. It allows us to grow them, to train them, to power them up. And then if you want to go ahead and sell that NFT at the end of the day, you're selling your progress and your effort towards that game that might have otherwise been completely lost in a traditional gaming sense. You know, when you you buy the new Call of Duty game, you certainly don't get to keep all of your guns and skins from the previous game because they want to sell you brand new ones, right? But with NFTs, you know, it, it makes sense to bring your progress along to, you know, wherever the game world is headed. Um, but basically, you know, there's 100% a reason we're focusing a little bit more on the gaming side of things this year. And that's why we're going to see a lot of cool gaming drops coming through like Cryptomon next week. Um, I personally feel that it's where the focus of NFTs is trending. And our company as a whole is definitely not going to uh, get left behind in that race. Well, I can only congratulate you on your development and your future prospects. Anything you'd like to add, guys? Well, we, we agree with uh, Damien uh, regarding uh, everything you said. Well, NFT gaming, you know, it's uh, giving an NFT utility and uh, making sure that your progress in the game goes with you to wherever you go and making the digital asset actually yours so you can trade it and you can sell all of these, so to say, hours that you've invested in the game, developing your character, developing your uh, world, developing whatever is definitely the future of gaming. And we definitely, of course, uh, very honored to be uh, of the first that are doing uh, such a, uh, a sale, a drop on uh, crypto.com. Well, thank you very much for answering that. Now, my next question may be tricky because, as you know, the crypto market is highly vo volatile and trends seem to be constantly evolving. Many people believe the hype is actually temporary. First, we saw ICOs boom, and then it was the year of DeFi, and now we're following the NFT and metaverse trend. And although the metaverse seems to be here to stay, how have you positioned CryptoMon to be sustainable? And how do you see the NFT market outlook in the next few years? That's a great question. Uh, allow me to pick this one up, Amit, if it's uh, fine by you. As long as you don't tell them what you think about profile picture NFTs, then we're good. 
<laughs> okay, I will try to do my best. I will try to do my best, but I try can't to stick to your utility NFTs and games. I will games, try. Right? Yeah, I will try. I will try to. But now we want, want to know, Amit. To he has to answer that. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> what. Of the, I will box. try. I will try to be as gentle as gentle as I can. So let's start with. The, let, let's start from top to bottom. Let's start with the SEO booms. Boom. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, maybe this is not the most popular answer that you guys are getting on your show. But uh, yeah, I think that we're, we are in a bubble. We were in a bubble. And I think that exactly like the ICO boom, exactly like the dot com bo- boom, um, many uh, investors got a little bit confused from all of the noise that is happening in the, in the industries. People uh, are investing money out of uh, out of uh, ignorance to, because they don't understand enough what they're investing in. It co- it creates a lot of opportunities for rug pullers, and it creates uh, the perfect environment for a bubble. Uh, but and here is the but: out of all of these cha- uh, all of all of that chaos, out of the dot com bubble, Amazon rise, eBay rise, Microsoft, Intel, Cisco. Booking.com, Expedia, I can keep on going. So from the ICO bubble, let's call it back in the day that we were experiencing the same thing that we experienced in the past, out of these many amazing projects also emerged, right? Like most of the blockchains that we are using today started guys as ICOs. A lot of the projects, like the older projects that we, we are using today have started as ICOs. Most of them today, even though the crash has ca- came upon us and the markets were completely wiped out of uh, value, most of them today, to most of them, you will go back and you will beg just to, for the opportunity to buy at the top of the ICO bubble, right? Exactly like buying Amazon at the top of the dot-com bubble, which is made about how much? Uh, 2,000x from there. So... We are definitely in a, scene, in, a, in a scene that we're experiencing uh, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of rock pools, and a lot of chaos in the industry, which leads to stuff like uh, the Luna crash and UST crash that even the best of us, the most sophisticated of us, got hurt from um, because opportunities were there and just people are using them. So, um, yeah, we had, uh, it was, then it was the Euro DeFi's. We saw a big boom again, biggest DeFi's and the best ones will probably be, so they'll probably keep surviving. They'll probably keep thriving. Now we have the NFT and a metaverse trend and you are completely correct. So out of the, all of that chaos, the strong ones, the high quality ones will prevail and they will get stronger and they will become the future of this industry. That's a, that's my opinion regarding uh, regarding the chaos and uh, the misunderstanding that is uh, ruling the markets at the moment. All of the confusion, let's call it. Now, how Cryptomon uh, protects itself and its investors from it? That was a very, very good question. Unlike a lot of projects, Cryptomon does not raise equity, uh, does not raise funds by selling tokens. We have sold equity. Actually, it's not it's not a secret now. Our CEO just wrote a letter about it on our Medium. You can find it there in our Medium channel. We've just closed a huge Series A fundraising round where we sold equity without selling one token, not even one token. That means that we're not adding any new tokens to the to the circulating supply in the market. Hence, not adding any pressure. Uh, of token sales in the market from big investors and VCs that are trying to get as fast as they as they can their investment back into their pockets. All our seed ra- our Series A round at, again was done with equity. That's how we're trying to protect ourselves and our investors and the long term view of the company. Theoretically speaking, even if if even if we we're going to uh, winter now of two years and not one token will be sold. And our token will go to somewhere where Luna is, theoretically. Company will still continue going. Our investors will still uh, enjoy knowing that we continue developing the Cryptomon metaverse and the Cryptomon game. And that their investment uh, in the company keeps on keeps on going because we have enough funding now uh, raised through equity in Series A. Um, 
that's about that. Uh, I think that's how we positioned it to be sustainable. Uh, and as for my uh, market outlook in the next few years, uh, Amit asked me not to go there, but uh, you asked me to go there. But we so want we... you to go there, so yeah, <laughs> do. Like, <laughs> we aim to please. I will be very, very brief, uh, and I will try to be very, very gentle. I'm from the side of the NFT investors who believe that if it has no usage and no utility, it's uh, it's basically uh, useless. Why? It's a whole different story. Tell coach to invite me to another AMA, and I'll be more than happy to to answer because we'll it, sure it, do. It, we'll it's sure. going to be a very a very long answer, but. For me, if it has no utility and you cannot explain to yourself why you're holding it and what's your actual need in it and why others might need it to use it, uh, it holds no significant value. Um, and it's basically gambling uh, with all of these, uh, as Amit calls them, the profile pictures uh, used as NFTs. So I, I believe... I believe that NFTs are going to move towards utility. Each NFT project is going to get to try to get as much utility as it can for its NFT in order for people to use it and enjoy it um, and not only collect it as digital items, so to say. Because at the end of the day, guys, let's not forget, this is just proof of ownership, right, with an NFT. Your driver license can be an NFT re- er, issued by the government. Does it make it something special that I would like to collect? Do I need to collect um, its uh, driving license, even if it, even if it's his utility? Probably not. Then that's what I think about it. But again, sorry for the long answer. That's what I have to share, Amit. I yeah, I have I have to I have to comment comment on this. Um, when we look at NFT communities as a whole, we do see value in the network effect that they create, and also being part of a community is also some form of value when everyone are centered across one specific idea. This is also something that is, is value. It doesn't have to be uh, easily equatable or easily uh, calculate, calculated, but still is considered value. Now, when we look at, for example, Board Ape Yacht Club, which is like the well-renowned, most uh, well-known um, NFT project, even they, to begin with, their main utility was not obviously the profile picture NFT. This was the, side, the byproduct of what they created. But that was being part of their Discord, being part of uh, people that have uh, a vision similar to yours, sharing ideas, bouncing off ideas, maybe creating projects together, whatnot. And then also they understood that that might not be enough. So they moved to a lot of different things. For example, they created the mutant. Mutants were the second one. And then on top of that, they also created ApeCoin. And they also created uh, Other Side, um, Other Deed and Other Side. And then they're also creating a game. So basically, they understand that they need to add a utility on top of the profile picture uh, era that was uh, famous from like, let's call it April 2021 when, when BAYC was launched um, until November. They understand that you need to keep innovating. And I think a lot of uh, great communities within the crypto space of NFT projects will continue uh, innovating uh, towards uh, utility. So I think gaming and utility NFTs as a whole is the first vision as to where uh, nfts do have utility in them and i think a lot of uh, pfp projects will transition towards that and if i could just briefly um just on the same kind of topic i see profile picture nfts a lot like maybe a digital country club membership or something like that you you wouldn't buy a membership to a country club that can't offer you anything so if you are going to buy that membership, so to speak, there has to be some substance and utility behind it, or else it's almost just like buying a country club membership without benefits, and then you walk in and are surprised when the whole place is empty. That's kind of the way that I see it. I've always thought it was something very interesting. I think guys, that we're all saying the same thing, just that I'm saying it a little bit more brutal. At the end of the day, if the NFT has no, has no utility, then we agree that it's kind of useless. Now, I mean, being a part of the of the board of the club, you know, is amazing. But using the the NFT to join, to actually join the Discord channel, to verify that you have it, and makes it a key for you to enter a closed community 
of uh, high profile individuals like CryptoPunks does is in fact a utility. Being able to buy land that everybody wants is a utility. Getting tokens airdrops to your wallet because you hold an NFT that everybody wants to trade and use is utility. So the more utilities you have with your NFT that makes sense, the higher the value of the NFT should be. And I see, again, I say it because I see a lot of projects, you know, rising on, uh, on OpenSea. You know, I see like uh, the other monkeys, monkeys from space, chairs, tables, flowers, whatever, you know, pigeons. Everything is being thrown out there, you know, just from people to try to make quick bucks uh, on the back of uh, innocent in, uh, investors that are thinking and buying stories that they're, they're investing in the next big thing that is probably going to fade and be a Ponzi scheme. So that's what I don't like about the industry, and that's what gives a lot of it a bad name. Uh, that's everything I wanted to say about the subject. So we all agree. It needs to have utility. Yeah, it's just different ways of putting it, isn't it, Toma? Um, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've got one last question for you three, which is many users want to get involved in the play to earn games and the NFT space. Now, what advice would you give them as a beginner and how should they choose which play to earn games to use? And what's more... How can they benefit from playing play to you know P two P games on a regular basis? I mean, it would be great if you could give us some approximate numbers or some advice. Whoever you feel is welcome. Um, first of all, um, focus on a small amount of games and try to be the best you can at those particular games. Um, second, choose games that you like and not games that you play um, just because they're hyped right now. Choose the games that, you know, if I'm, for example, a first-person shooter player, I'll focus more on first-person shooters. If I'm more in strategy games, if I'm more in, in sports-themed games, then focus on what interests you. Also, understand what is your core, let's call it core belief within, within gaming and crypto. Are you looking to uh, expand as a player? Or are you looking to create some form of income? If you're creating some form of income, then it doesn't really need to be a game that you're really in, engaged and interested in. However, you need to remember that the current ecosystems uh, within um, gaming and token economies within gaming and crypto aren't really sustainable. So even if you find a game that is interesting and it creates a significant yield in the beginning, it will definitely not create significant yield in the future. So try to, 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 to choose your project and the, the games you focus on and those that are most interesting to you. Uh, and also choose strong companies. When you're investing in, in tokens of companies, and I've, I've been to all the booms, right? You said ICO booms of 2017. We, we had like tokens like PeerCoin much earlier than 2017. Uh, and, and, and if you look at, for example, I think in CoinMarketCap, you can see the history of the top 100 uh, at every snapshot in time. So you can see, for example, how the top 100 looked in 2015. I think only one or two projects are still there and that are still alive. So I think that in a sense, when you're choosing um, tokens to buy and when you're choosing games to play, try to remember that there's a company building that game behind it that you needed to have sustainability and being able to fund itself moving forward because a lot of projects that I invested in personally in 2017 died until 2022 and they didn't really have a chance to live the 2021 uh, boom. So, so in that sense, choose projects that are heavily backed or backed significantly, uh, especially if you don't follow them daily um, and basically projects that you believe in and are interesting to you. I have another thing to add to what Amit says. Then, uh, other than that, uh, when I'm looking, uh, as all of you guys over here, you know, uh, listening to this show, we, we ourselves also investors, you know, of projects. We're buying tokens in uh, IDOs. We're trading them uh, on swaps. We're trading them on uh, exchanges, etc. And when I'm looking to invest in some kind of a, of a gaming project, the first thing I do is I'm going to the website and I'm checking who the team is. That's the first thing I do. I'm checking the team and I'm checking the advisory board. Then I'm going to the team, I'm going to almost each and every one of them, and I'm going to see who they are on LinkedIn. If they're show, if I see that, you know, that's what they do full-time job and that's in their job, job description and they see that they've been doing it for a while now, 
and their profile is real and it has history, I know that th that that project is being created by serious people that are here for the long run. If I usually see a project uh, that I see a few a few faces and uh, and profile pre profile pictures that were uploaded a month ago and uh, a profile that was created uh, oh, a month ago with some friends and uh, a title uh, three workplaces and one of them is that specific project. I know that it's probably, you know, some guys trying their luck to see how it goes and trying to make some quick cash. So my, my advice is to, if you already got to a project after everything Amit says, uh, Amit said, look, to see who the team is and who their advisors are. Good team, good advisors, serious project, probably gonna make it. And aside from that, kind of to re-echo what these guys are saying, you know, my advice would be to focus on companies that are building like these folks here at Cryptomon. Companies that are focused on, you know, building a game first. So many times, you know, the mistake is made that people feel the need to push that play to earn narrative so heavily because it's what they believe people want or it's because you know that's what people are screaming at them that they want but in order to have any fun long existing play to earn game you need to have fun playing so i guess my suggestion would just be don't ju jump blindly into games where the main focus is making money because it's greatly unsustainable uh, if you don't have a community that is enjoying the game at its core you're not going to have a sustainable earning mechanism it's as simple as that so I think the first step to building blockchain games is getting people to play it. And that's a, that's a step that can unfortunately uh, often be ignored right out of the get-go. Well, thank you ever so much for your time, the information, for answering our question. I have one last announcement to make. We are picking three users who've been with us until now, and each one of them will receive three Cryptomon NFTX to their wallets. Their, the names of the winners will appear right after this announcement on triple C.io Twitter. Congratulations to you all. Please DM at CryptoCoin Coach with your Binance Smart Chain wallets on Twitter to claim it within 24 hours. Also, I would advise you to make sure you've liked and retweeted all tweets related to our today's panel because five random users who will have done that will get $250 in Cayman tokens from the CryptoMon team. Now, back to you guys. Sadly, we've reached our time budget, but I would like to say that it was a real pleasure and it was really fun to host you here live on CryptoCoins Coach. I'm sure our users have learned a lot because I've definitely learned a great deal more about Krypton. So thank you ever so much, Damien, Ahmed and Toma. Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. It was happy to be here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and just one more. Thank you, everybody, for taking the chance to come and listen to us speak. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get out in the community and speak, especially some communities that I'm not necessarily used to reaching out into. So thank you for the opportunity, and uh, more than happy to do this again sometime, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you one last thing. I, I made a mistake. I was like, what I meant is one NFT per user to $150 in total. Apparently, I can't remember things. Sorry, once again. And pleasure. And please, guys, when you send your wallet addresses, please make sure that this is not an exchange wallet address, because if it's an exchange wallet address, it will just get lost and it will never get there. Please uh, do not send a PNB uh, wallet address. Uh, excuse me, exchange address. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Pleasure. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care, everybody.